video for the third Sunday of Advent, we are in City Hall in the office of our City Councillor, Catherine McKenney, the Councillor for Somerset Ward. And Catherine, it's great here to be here with you. Yeah, it's great to have you in the office. And Catherine is going to lead off by reading one of our scripture passages for Sunday. A reading from the Gospel of Luke. John said to the crowds that came out to be baptized by him, you brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruits worthy of repentance. Do not begin to say to yourselves, we have Abraham as our ancestor. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children to Abraham. Even now the ax is lying at the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. And the crowds asked him, what then should we do? In reply, he said to them, whoever has two coats must share with anyone who has none, and whoever has food must do likewise. Even tax collectors came to be baptized, and they asked him, teacher, what should we do? He said to them, collect no more than the, than the amount prescribed for you. Soldiers also asked him, and we, what should we do? He said to them, do not extort money from anyone by threats or false accusation and be satisfied with your wages. 
As the people were filled with expectation and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah, John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. So with many other exhortations, he proclaimed the good news to the people, the gospel of Christ. So Catherine, we're going to circle back to this reading to talk about what it says to our times, but we'll start with our times so that we can kind of lay that foundation. Uh, and so I, I want to ask you as our city councillor, uh, well, first of all, uh, what does a city councillor do? For those <laughs> out in our vid who are watching the video who might not know, what do you do? What do I do? I often tell people to, to walk outside, turn right around, and everything you see we're pretty much responsible for in some way or another. Um, but, you know, the simple answer is we deliver municipal services, and those are, you know, the obvious ones like garbage collection, uh, public health, uh, fire, paramedic, recreation services for kids. Um, but we also uh, ensure that, you know, organizations and agencies in our communities have the funding they need to also uh, provide services on our behalf, food security, mm -hmm. you know, social services, etc. And how long have you been doing this? <laughs> well, I've been a city councillor for seven years. Yeah. I've been at the city working in one way or another uh, since 1998, as a matter of fact. So it's been a, it's been a long time that I've been here uh, working at the municipal level. Sure. Now, how did you decide to get into elected <laughs> politics? Um, you know what? It was a very quick decision, as a matter of fact. Um, and when I tried to get out of a couple of times, um, <laughs> oddly enough. I, uh, but I did make the decision, uh, you know, quickly one day I thought to myself, you know, uh, the counselor who had been the counselor for this ward, Diane Holmes, uh, had been the counselor for 32 years. She was, in my opinion anyway, in the opinion of many, uh, one of the best progressive city counselors we've, we've had at the city. Uh, but I knew that eventually Diane would need to retire. And I, I always, you know, talked to her and I always thought about who would be able to replace her, that we needed, uh, you know, strong progressive voice, more women at City Hall, more gender diversity at City Hall. And then I thought one day, you know what, I think I'm talking about myself. And at some point, um, you have to step up. If that's what you feel uh, is, yeah. is required, then you need to step up. So I, I did. Did you have to consult your family? <laughs> I did, but they are always uh, very anxious for me to uh, enter into politics. They, they were huge supporters. My daughter at the time uh, was seven, uh, and she came out knocking doors with me every day uh, in the summer. And, uh, and my wife was you know, very supportive, really wanted me to do it. How do you... Um... How do you separate the personal time from the public time? Yeah, that's difficult, uh, no doubt, especially when you first uh, get into politics because you feel that you have to be on all the time, and, and you almost do. Uh, but, you know, as you grow into the, uh, into the role, and if you have a good staff, and I have very good staff, you really can, uh, you know, relinquish some of that um, responsibility onto the staff. They do an excellent job for me every day. So I do, I carve out time. I actually try to put my phone down every night around 8.30 or 9 and not look at it again. Well, let's, uh, let's talk about our neighborhood. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. you, you had a longer time than I have. I, I'm new to the neighborhood, yes. relatively speaking. Uh, but I'm part of a church that is, uh, has deep roots in the neighborhood. And so uh, I want to ask you, what is your sense of the neighborhood in this ward? Oh, this is, you know, one of the, the best neighborhoods. Um, it, it really is, uh, it encompasses, um, you know, a lot of things that I believe very strongly in. Um, you know, we do certainly aspire to ensure that there's housing that meets everyone's needs. Uh, in this ward. We have, uh, you know, amazing partners in the faith community in this ward is very strong. Um, 
you know, we, we, there's a, a very strong sense of community and, uh, you know, people want the same things. They want, you know, great transit. They want good recreation services for kids. They want green space and parks and places to, to gather. A lot of people in the downtown uh, live in multi-residential buildings uh, or don't have a lot of yard space or green space. So it's really important to, you know, pro to provide that public space for people to come together. So, you know, whenever I think about this, this ward, I just think it's just such an easy recipe. You just have to work to get there. And, and this is a community that works very hard um, I couldn't do almost any of what I do without uh, the community behind me and, uh, and we really do work towards a much better uh, space for everyone. So if you could draw a map for us, mm -hmm. what, is, what is the ward? What's the geography? Oh, the geography, it's actually a, the smallest geography. It's the densest ward, uh, but it's uh, the smallest geography and it uh, to the west it is the trillium line so the the train the, the mm -hmm. trillium line um and then to the east it's the middle of the canal yeah uh north is the middle of the ottawa river yeah it includes parliament yeah actually. yeah and uh south it is essentially the queensway except at preston where there's a bit of a tail that goes down to carling right yeah right and uh, th there's a fair amount of diversity in this neighborhood. There's apartments, there's, there's uh, single family mm -hmm. homes, there's lots of retail, and, and then the main industry of Ottawa is here. Yeah, too. absolutely, absolutely. There's a huge commercial uh, mm -hmm. sector. Uh, I, there are five uh, business improvement areas. Uh, we have a lot of traditional main streets with businesses on them. We, like, as you say, single family homes, multi-residential. We have the largest number of rooming houses as well uh, in this ward. So a lot of people who are precariously housed. Uh, so we, you know, we have people who are very well off, but people who uh, struggle every day. So it's, uh, it's a diverse ward in terms of that socioeconomic makeup. In your time as councillor, have there been any main issues or focus areas? Oh, certainly homelessness has become uh, much more of a, a crisis in our, yeah. in our community. Uh, when I was first elected, I would say we'd have, you know, at any time, maybe a dozen people who were sleeping outside regularly. Mm -hmm. uh, three years ago, uh, that was about 40. Last year it was about 90, and this year it's about 170 people who are sleeping outside um, on any given night. So it's really become, you know, such a crisis, uh, the opioid crisis, you know, coupled with that, uh, certainly, and then, you know, COVID on top of it all. Uh, it really, uh, it really has um, exposed such a gap in, you know, for in the, the, the haves and the have nots really. Well, uh, at St. John's, we would like to be part of the solution, like yes. working in partnership, and we know it takes a lot of partners. Absolutely. Um, what, are you, what are you looking forward to? Uh, in my own personal career yeah, sure, or sure. path? Um, well, you know, I just a few minutes ago announced to the media that I will be uh, running for mayor in 2022. Um, I've thought about this for a long time. I, uh, I really believe that it, we have an opportunity right now to build a very progressive city. Uh, I see so much opportunity in this city to, uh, to build it, to, you know, to make transit work for people, to make housing work for people, and to, you know, to, to really uh, look at what we can do around our climate crisis and ensure that, uh, that we're you know, leaving something behind for the next generation. Um, so it's, I think that it's just such a great city, uh, and uh, yeah, I've, uh, like I said, I've made the decision that uh, I'll give it a go. Well, congratulations. Thank you. And, and this means perhaps that we will be, uh, we will be uh, meeting some new candidates uh, potentially. Yes, yeah, and certainly I will not be seeking yeah. re-election for Somerset Ward yeah. uh, Councillor. Yeah. So yeah, there will be new candidates for, for okay. that. So it will be an exciting year, 2022, in terms of municipal politics. Sure, so. sure. Let's come back to the reading. So we've set mm -hmm. kind of the context of what's going on for you, what's going on in our community. Uh, it's our second week of ha a reading about John the Baptist. What do you what do you take away from this reading? You know, uh, as soon as I read it in, in preparation, um, and then as I was reading it again now, uh, you know that it, it one word is compassion, and really just 
having uh, that understanding that if you have more than you need, uh, you can share it. And that we're all better off if there's no one who's really doing without. Um, you know, and it's sometimes we might not see that immediately, but the, the, the long-term effects of, the, of a very equitable society is that we are all better. All of our waters have been raised and, uh, and I see that just so clear in the, in the message from, from John. Yeah, so what John the Baptist does is he, he's actually very specific to yes. people about even small things like how many coats. Exactly. And, and uh, when I think of how we live today, much of what we do is solutions that we've worked on as a whole community with big funding, mm -hmm. uh, but that doesn't take away from what we would individually feel moved to do to make our community absolutely. a better place. Oh, absolutely. Because, you know, often people will ask me, what can I do about housing and homelessness? And that's a big question, and it's a and it's a and it's a big answer, and it's a you know, and it takes more than even your municipal government. It takes serious investments from a federal government, provincial health mm -hmm. dollars, so it can seem overwhelming. The solutions are there, but at, on an at an everyday, um, uh, you know, uh, everyday kind of um, thinking through what you can do, certainly. Uh, working with organizations, volunteering, it makes a difference in people's lives. If people have enough food to eat, if people have a warm place to go during the day, uh, if people just know people are watching out for them and care, uh, we really, uh, we really can make a difference one person at a time. I know it. it you know, sometimes mm -hmm. that's, uh, you know, it seems like that does it not possible, that, but it really is. So the, the season that for us is Advent and Christmas mm -hmm. and, and you know for our Jewish brothers and sisters it's yes. Hanukkah and so many religions have a holiday at this time uh, and they're about uh, compassion. There's like a spirit in the air of everyone yes. wanting to be compassionate uh, and we, we might be tempted you know to just confine the focus to the season when mm -hmm. uh, the tradition points us to it. But, it, but in reality uh, John was paving the way for Jesus to be about a way of life that's always about compassion. Yes, yes. Yeah, and I think that, uh, you know, if I, if I think about uh, this city and the people in the city who, who I work with and the organizations, faith community, I see that happening year round. Yeah, you know, at this time of year, of course, there's that, like you say, a more of a spirit in the air, uh, but I do see it year round. People, uh, people want what's best, and, uh, you know, I think that, uh, people are always willing to 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 make those sacrifices to make sure that everyone is taken care of So Catherine, I will yes. look forward to having you come in person to ah. be with our community at st. John's I can't at wait some point over the year before the drama yes. Sometime soon. <laughs> yes, absolutely. and and thank you for uh, being here to talk about this today. Thank you. I really appreciate it Stand in the
as we continue to prepare for Sunday worship with these videos, it really does strike me how ready people in our wider community really are to talk about the scriptures and where they meet our present circumstances. I find it so important to be ready for partnership. As we get to know our neighbors well, not only are they ready to be in solidarity with us, they are even ready to share in the language and ideas and stories we tell and about why they're important to us. Community leaders, politicians, activists, people on the street, they are comfortable reading the scriptures and talking about them on public video. May their ease increase our boldness. And I invite you now to pray with me the collect for this third Sunday of Advent. God of power and mercy, you call us once again to celebrate the coming of your Son. Remove those things which hinder love of you, that when he comes, he may find us waiting in awe and wonder. For him who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever, Amen. And may the God of hope, peace, and joy be with us. Amen.